Hello, my name is Dr. Nigel Hacking. I'm an image guided surgeon or interventional radiologist, if you prefer. I have been one of the UK's pioneers of embolization therapy, first treating cancers, tumors in the, in the liver and the kidney and other rarer tumors from the pancreas and so on, including metastases. And I have done that for about 30 years. And then when fibroid embolization for women with symptomatic uterine fibroids uh, came up about 20 years ago, I thought, well, I'm embolizing these complex liver tumors. I'm sure I could embolize uh, fibroids for women and protect them from having to have hysterectomy. And these women can still bear children after that. So I started fibroid embolization in Southampton and that was so successful, I then, decided to, to take this overseas. It's particularly common in Afro-Caribbean women. So where better to go to treat these women than in Africa and the Caribbean? So with practices in Trinidad, in Barbados, in Nairobi, and in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, and in the UK, in Southampton and in London, I've, I've done over 3000 fibroid embolization cases. I think probably the most experienced in the country. Um, in 2010, I started reading papers on prostate embolization coming out of Sao Paulo in Brazil and Lisbon in Portugal. And I'd been working with uh, Professor Pisco from Lisbon on fibroid embolization. So he invited me out to Lisbon and I learned the technique, the intricacies of the anatomy, the intricacies, the complexity of doing the procedure. And then I brought that back to Southampton and um, I did that first case with my colleagues in early 2013. Now for a radiologist or an image guided surgeon to be doing a urological procedure wasn't necessarily popular with all urologists at that time. And NICE suggested that we run a registry. So I got the president of the Society of uh, Radio Interventional Radiology and the president of the Society of Urology to agree and NICE were so impressed with the, with the joint approach that they funded or, or co-funded a large registry, the UK ROPE. So I had, had instigated that, I was the clinical lead for that, and Southampton was the biggest um, contributor. And we showed that prostate artery embolization really did work. Not in everybody, but in about 80% of men, it gave excellent relief of symptoms, and it, it was a day case procedure. So what does prostate artery embolization involve? As I say, it, it's day case. It, it involves a bit of local anesthetic in either the groin, sometimes both groins, or the wrist. And then that allows us to put a tiny little plastic tube, a sheath into that artery using ultrasound to guide us. So it's nice and safe. And then we use X-ray imaging on a real time monitor. So this is much smaller than keyhole surgery. This is microsurgery. And we can follow a series of little plastic catheters and wires up through the arterial tree until we get into the pelvic arteries, where on each side of the pelvis, there are branching arteries. So if, if, if this with the ring on is the prostate artery, I get my catheter closer and closer, squirting x-ray dye, which I can see on the screen, until eventually I get my little micro catheter, smaller than a millimeter, into this prostate artery. Now, before I block off that artery with these embolization particles, which are like little grains of sand, I do careful imaging to show that I'm on that side of the prostate only, that there's no blood going to anywhere else. And then I insist on, and everywhere I've trained, has this three-dimensional um, angiography equipment called DynaCT. Now, that will give you a CT-like image in the cath lab. That's the, the, the operating theater that I'm working. And we can see the prostate and we can see half of the prostate relating to the side that I'm in lighting up. And we can make sure that no other surrounding organs are lighting up. The embolization procedure itself takes about 15 or 20 minutes per side once we're in the artery. And these tiny little beads float in the forward flow of the artery until they lodge. And then they block off those arteries until there's no more blood flow to that side of the prostate. We then manipulate our catheter onto the other side and complete the process. The whole thing takes around about two hours. It's not painful. You don't need a general anesthetic. You don't need a catheter. You can go home later, same day. Like some of the other minimally invasive treatments for the enlarged prostate, this doesn't work immediately. 
the prostate probably swells for a few days and we give you anti-inflammatory drugs and some antibiotics. But by a week, that swelling is going down, you're returning to normal. And by about a month, you should definitely see an improvement in your symptoms. So what are the improvement? The International Prostate Symptom Score grades the degree of lower urinary tract symptoms you've got, whether you've got a poor stream, whether you have to go frequently, how often you get up at night, whether you have to strain, whether there's any leaking, incontinence or accidents. And we monitor that score both before and then at, at, a, at three months after, and we see a, a definite drop in those symptoms and an improvement in the quality of life. There's no blood loss, so you don't need a blood transfusion. There's no problems with erection or sexual function. There's no retrograde ejaculation, which you get after many of the surgical techniques. There may be a slight reduction in the volume of the ejaculate, the seminal fluid, but there's no reduction in the pleasure of male orgasm. So this is a very popular technique. It doesn't work on everybody. In the 10% or 15% where it doesn't work, it doesn't make the subsequent surgery any harder. In fact, by reducing the blood supply, it makes a TURP safer and a more bloodless operation. Or if you're going onto a HOLEP, it doesn't make it any harder. If anything, it makes it easier. So you lose nothing by trying a prostate embolization. Now, typically patients are treated with these symptoms over the age of 50, but that's because of the sexual dysfunction. But because there's no sexual dysfunction to speak of, with embolization, we will treat symptomatic patients with an enlarged prostate that have been seen by a urologist, even under the age of 50. There's no upper limit of size of the prostate, like some of the surgical things. 100 mils is really the upper limit for TURP and for resume steam, steam treatment. Yes, you can go a bit higher, but the, the complications are raised with those surgery. There's no upper limit. We can treat patients with 150, 250, three, four. I've treated a patient with 500 mil prostate, which up till now had needed an open operation. So this really is a very popular option for men. The problem is nobody's heard about it. And that's where this Prostate Matters uh, website is so valuable. If you're interested in having um, an embolization, speak to your GP and get, a, and get a referral, and preferably go and see your own urologist and talk to him or her about embolization. If that urologist would rather not refer you, I work with a team of urologists both in Southampton and in London through the H HCA hospitals, Wellington and, and uh, the Princess Grace, and I can get you seen by a urologist. Why would we want that? Well, because I think this is a team approach Prostate cancer is also quite common, and I don't want to embolize patients that I we're suspecting have prostate cancer. So you'll go and see the urologist, he'll do an examination, check the PSA level, maybe do an MRI or even a biopsy, if and only if they're worried there's cancer. But if they're not, I'd be very happy to, to see you.